Hello and welcome to this session of 5 for 5th, where today we're going to discuss section 810 and relating fractional units to the whole. So we will begin by looking at journal page 280, and by the way, we are going to spend the majority of today's session going through the journal pages. Um, so when we look at journal page 280, this is the math message for the students on this particular day to complete this journal page. The first four questions are solved using unit fractions. And the next two, problems five and six, is a nice intro and will lead the students into unit percents. Now, something I really want to draw your attention to. If you look on our, in our student, and I'm sorry, in our teacher's reference manual on page 670, the ongoing assessment box makes it very clear that students are to understand problems one through six. Only some students will be able to do seven through nine. So we're spending the majority of our time on one through six. And then really taking special note and listening to the students who can indeed solve these, kind of get a feel for how they're doing it. So that's the math message for the day. Then we go to the, oh, here we go. Now this is journal page 281. This is broken into these two sections. This first section is a nice spiral from previous sections and units actually where they're just used, utilizing unit boxes. So we're going to take a second, second and do D of that example which is 3 8 jar contains 21 cookies. Well here we go. 3 8 I need to make a unit box with 8 pieces. Okay, 8, oh excuse me, 3 of those pieces three of those parts share 21 cookies. So through division, I know that each part has seven cookies in it. So there's seven cookies in these eight parts. I have a total of 56 cookies. Okay, that's a nice refresher, again, of old sections and old units, in fact. Now the bottom of this page, now oh, that's a whole different story. I should say the middle of this page, part two. Take a look at this chart. They're providing the sale price for the students, and they're providing the percent of the list price. The question is, how are they going to calculate the actual list price? That's what we're going to go through today. We're going to do three examples, and uh, the one that I have circled here, this one's the most challenging, so I'm going to save that one for last. So let's go really slow, and again, understanding. They provide us with the sale price and the percent of the list price. How are we going to calculate? the list price. Well, we're going to do this using two different methods. First, we're going to use the unit box method, and then we're going to go into an actual unit percent. So let's start. I have 60%. If I'm going to use a unit box, I need to have a, a fraction, not a percent. So let's take 60%, rewrite that as 60 over 100, simplify that into 6 tenths, some of your students may simplify further to three-fifths. Go for it. I'm stopping at six-tenths because I am confident that all of our students will be able to use or simplify to six-tenths. I need ten, box, ten parts. Now, six of these boxes are sharing $120. Again, six boxes are sharing $120. So 120 divided by six means each box contains $20. If there are $20 in 10 boxes, you have a total of $200, which represents the list price of the item. Okay, now that was utilizing a unit box. Let's talk a minute about a unit percent. With a unit percent, you don't have to do these conversions. You just say to yourself, okay, now hold on, 60% of my whole. With now, instead of a unit box, I have a percent grid. It's called the 100 grid, but each of these boxes represents one unit percent, and the whole 100 makes up the 100%. 60%, which is the same as saying 60 of these squares is going to be sharing $120. So again, one box is what we call one unit percent. So 60 of these boxes, 120 divided by 60 of these boxes means every single box has a value of $2. So far so good. 
So there's two dollars to depending on how you know you want to draw it out. Every box contains two dollars. That means the boxes over here are also two dollars. You have a grand total two dollars for one hundred boxes, grand total of two hundred dollars. Again, same exact answer, two totally different ways to do it. Unit boxes, unit percent. Okay, going to the next one. This one, now I have a sale price of $450, which was 90% of the original list price. Here we go again. If I'm going to use a unit box, I need a fraction. So I'm going to change 90% to 90 over 100, which then simplifies to 9 tenths. So here we go. I need to make 10 boxes. Nine of these boxes will be sharing $450. That means each box contains $50. Again, 50 times the nine would be $450 up to this point plus an extra 50. So I have now 10 boxes at $50 each, which is a grand total of $500. So the list price of this particular item is $500. Now how are we going to do that with a grid? Well, let's recall that every box represents 1% of the problem. They're telling us that 90% of the original cost, sorry, 90% is equivalent to $450. So I say, what is 450 divided by 90, which equals $5 for my one unit? Well, if I have one unit at $5, how much is 100 units? Well, that's going to be $500, which is exactly what we got using this method. So again, it's really it's nice to show the kids two methods and then see who picks up which way. Now, I left this last one as our final example um, for a reason. Take a look at this one. 85% of the list price. Well, if I start to convert 85% into a fraction, I'm going to have 85 over 100, which then simplifies to 17 twentieths. This is very interesting. I could make one huge unit box with 20 parts in it. I just think for this particular example, it's showing the kids that this other way really is valuable because it is going to be much easier to look at it from a unit percent perspective. I need 85%. I need 85 of these boxes. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and then another 5. Two. Okay, this piece, these 85 squares, these 85 unit percents share $255. We'll say that one more time. 85% that I've just enclosed here share $255. That means one unit box is worth $3. Now if I look at the whole, what does the whole 100% equal? Well the whole 100% is going to equal $300. Okay? Wonderful. Okay now the last journal page for this particular section. Uh, it's continuing on. Now for problems 5 through 8, that's just what we've been doing from section 810, finding the holes. Now when you go down below that, the kids are going to be spiraling back to section 8 9, where now they're going to be finding the parts given the holes. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much, and uh, we will see you at the next 5 for 5th. And as always, if there's a problem, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks again, and have a good day.